Okay, the recording is on. Good morning and welcome everybody to BC310, our course on church and ministry administration. This is our last lecture, I think. Um, we'll be wrapping up today. And uh, so thank you, each one, for joining. Uh, with us through this course. Let's take a moment to pray and then we'll get started for today. Could somebody lead us in prayer, please? All right, Asha, go ahead. Dear God, thank you so much, Lord, for this day. Thank you for our breath in our lungs. Thank you, God, as we're about to learn the book of CME and about to conclude also, Lord. I pray that you fill us with your wisdom and knowledge, that we may grasp every truth and every knowledge that comes from you, Lord. Thank you so much, God, for our statues, Lord. I speak about the things, Lord, that you're uh, full in uh, spirit and helping and uh, help as it's teaching, Lord, that you pour. Um, understanding and wisdom as it to help us to understand God. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. So we're down to the the final, I think the final lap, final round here on this course. Um last week we talked a little bit about uh, project management execution and of course it's um, it's not a complete uh, you know uh, in-depth uh, learning on project management but just to give us an idea that even in the Christian ministry in the church when we are doing different things and different areas of ministry we need to look at uh, things as projects. Um, we're, we're actually doing a project, and then along uh, with that, of course, we we use the right methodology, uh, the right way to go about carrying that ministry out as a project. And there is uh, there are tools, there are there's knowledge available for us to how on how to run the project. How do you plan? How do you estimate? How do you execute? How do you manage the whole project so that everything is done well? So we are really bringing in professional knowledge, the skills that you know that is used everywhere, and we're using it in the ministry area. Uh, we shouldn't be afraid to do it uh, because really we want to make sure that uh, the things we are doing in the ministry are done well. And uh, you know, and of course, we want to manage the resources that people have given to us. We don't want that to be wasted. So, from that perspective, you know, project management uh, is very, very relevant to the Christian ministry, the church, and the various things that we do as part of Christian ministry. Today, uh, I just want to mention. I'm not necessarily going into uh, these things, but. Um, let me just go ahead and share the notes here. I just want to mention, you know, just three main points. And um, actually two of these uh, we will be getting into detail next semester. Right? So as part of church and ministry management, uh, or church and ministry administration, uh, we must leverage technology. So, um, and this is something we will get into next semester. I'm just kind of making a mention here. So uh, we're not uh, getting into the details of this. Um, uh, technology is, you know, it's, it is a, a very real part of our world in, in everything, almost everything that we do. And therefore, even in the church or in the ministry, we have to look at how can we use technology for what we are doing, and how do we, yeah, and of course we need to keep up with the things that are happening. So we look at technology as a tool, as an instrument, as a tool that we can use 
to further the work of the ministry. Right? So technology is not against the ministry. It's not something that we should avoid, but we should learn how to leverage it. So right from, you know, and I'm just mentioning these things, we'll get into uh, all of these and a lot more next semester. You know, uh, right from uh, the software just for regular office work. So for example, at APC, I think uh, every every staff, we give them a laptop. So they everybody has a laptop. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and some people may have more than one machine, <laughs> depending on their work. And then uh, we, uh, you know, everybody, of course, uses um, the office uh, tools like uh, your word processor, email, spreadsheet, all of those things. Now, most of us are using our own Windows. A few people use the Mac operating system, but generally, everyone is expected to use this uh, these office tools productivity tools uh, it's not an option you know it, it is the normal way we all do things so we communicate on email uh, we you know word powerpoint spreadsheet all those things are just normal tools that we use in daily work you know everyday work so this is taken as you know a granted thing i mean it's, it's just expected everybody needs to know how to work well with these tools. Um, apart from that, you know, we also use several different software systems. Uh, I've just mentioned a few here. Uh, uh, the accounting, like we said, uh, we use a software system called Tally. Uh, this is mainly for uh, the accountant. So not every nobody else has access to this. Um, then we use a church management system. Uh, I'll, I'll just quickly show you these things. Uh, uh, so we use a church management system uh, to manage all our people, uh, uh, contacts basically, and then there's a lot more that can be done with church management. And this is an open source. So you can go to rockrms.com, you can download this, uh, set it up for your own church, um, and you know start using it. And there's a lot, it has a lot of features. And of course, we customize it. We've customized it, the same software for um, not only our church, we customize it for Bible college, We're managing our Bible college applications, all those things that come in. We're also using it for managing our database of uh, uh, contact Christian ministers across the country and around the world. So the same is being used for different uh, purposes. Um, then we have uh, an HRM, Human Resource Management Software, They're just to manage our staff. I'll just give you a quick glance on this. We'll get into these details next uh, next semester. Uh, again, this is an open source software. Uh, we use it for people to re report their time, their work, apply for leaves, um, keeping employee information, things like that. And it can also um, uh, have to the recruiting process that can also be done. Uh, another piece of software that we system we use is a PHP list. Again, there's an open source. Um, and we use it for communications for our bulk emails of, you know, we manage our ma mailing lists and all of that. And we send emails out from here. So basically we, uh, our IT team handles these and there's, there's, there's a lot more. Uh, I, I will get into those details next semester. The point is, uh, we, as as a church, as a ministry, we have to, you know, I'm just uh, <laughs> making it very plain, we have to use technology. We can't not, I mean, I'm talking especially in an urban context. Yeah, if, if you're working in a in a village somewhere, uh, doing, you know, not, not very, even there, of course, you will be using technology, you'll use phones and so on and so forth. Um, so I, I think, you know, uh, definitely every church, every ministry will need to use um, uh, technology, right? So uh, I will just quickly give you an, uh, uh, you know, an, just an idea of what these things are. Um, I'm not uh, getting into the details, uh, but um, uh, we will do that um, next semester very quickly. 
uh, let me just um, show you a few things, right? So we mentioned um, um, our church management system. So um, basically, if I, this is our church management system. It is a Rock RMS, which we have customized for ourselves. So as soon as I log in, uh, I can see who all, who all have birthdays today, right? So, and where are they from? So this person is a Bible college student. He, today's his birthday. Uh, that's actually my dad. That's uh, his birthday, 81st birthday today. Uh, there's another person from Central, Ruby, uh, Samuel Condon. And there's another person who is from outside. And if there are anniversaries, it'll show here, right? So I can immediately see. So what I normally do every day is I just log in here and I'll, I'll wish all these people, whoever's birthdays are here, I'll wish them happy birthday, send them a WhatsApp message, and those anniversaries, right? And if I want to, I can just look up any person, you know, uh, just for just for example, I will uh, try to look up my wife, Amy. Um, and then, you know, you can see all the other Amy's here. Then, okay, I want looking up. So I can look up a person here, right? So I see her name. I see her, and I get all her details here. And I can see that, okay, she's, my, and the full family is shown. So uh, that's me, uh, son and daughter, and uh, all these details. And then, of course, you could, over here, um, you know, there's a lot of information we can track, you know. Uh, now, since it's my wife, there's not, not much information that we don't put. But usually when people make a call, they can add a note against this person. There's, when people apply for membership, that will show up here. If they're a Bible college student, that profile will show up here. Now, a lot of things can happen within the system. I'm just giving you uh, a quick uh, overview. I'll get into the details next next year. Okay, so this is a church management system. So technically, we, um, you know, we manage over. Um, uh, using this, we manage. I think approximately we may have a data of about, you know, so our church. I mean, the local church may be about two, three thousand people. Then about there's another side where we manage about over 10,000 pastors and leaders across India. So that's a separate database. Then we have another installation for Bible college, over 2,000 some students. So all that is there, you know, and it's all managed. So I can search for anybody, I can pull them up here, you know, and I can look up the details anytime. And uh, it's very, very useful, okay? So that's the church management system. Now, if I want to, what else we spoke about? The um, um, church management, okay. The uh, HRM, which is the, this is our uh, human resource management system. Um, this is where people uh, uh, will report their time, et cetera. Now, uh, what you, uh, when I log in, I'm logging in as an administrator, so I can see a lot more things than a, an individual staff, and I can do a lot more things here. Uh, when an individual staff, when they log in, they won't see all these things. Um, but basically, uh, you know, people report their timesheets here. Right? So, uh, you know, I, I haven't entered my timesheet for last week, but I'll show you. <laughs> Uh, maybe some old one here. So this is my timesheet for the week of 16th to 22nd October. You know, I just said, okay, this is all I did. This is the hours I reported, right? So, you know, every week. So I can go back and I can, uh, anyone can go back and, you know, look at their work. And I can look at other people's work uh, just you know, anyway, it, it's all this is there uh, for years. Uh, yeah. I mean, not years means from the time we started using it. So each individual reports the timesheet. Uh, our admin person will review and approve. So, you know, it's submitted, it's reviewed, it's approved. Um, uh, and then, of course, be, as an admin, I get to do a lot more things here. I can look up people. I can, um, people apply for leave here. So, um, you can they apply for leave 
and uh, you know um, so these are all the leave applications that have come in uh, and our HR person will you know approve those leaves and all of that stuff things happen here so uh, this is the human resource management you know you can actually um, do a lot of things managing your people and the recruitment process as, as well as I mentioned earlier right so just quick over we'll get in the details next uh, next semester so that's the HRM. The last thing I'll just quickly show you. There's a lot, a lot of other things that we use, but I'm just quickly uh, showing you some of the things that we use. Um, yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah. All right, I need to. Okay. I think we changed this. Um, sorry about it. I think we, we changed it recently and I forgot to update my password. Let me see. Yeah. That's the mail admin. Mm. Okay. Anyway, I, I will show this to you next semester. I, I just, or I can quickly, um, just give me, a, oh, oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think I can show this to you next semester. Don't worry about it. So basically, PHP list, uh, I, I just had to update my password. Um, this one, we use it to manage uh, our um, mailing lists so that means when we want to um, you know send out bulk emails and so on we use php list we, like you said more than twenty thousand, i think more than twenty thousand email ids are there we manage it we have different groups so we can target so usually i would say okay send an email to all those who are in our church congregation in bangalore so that we can send an email just to them or you want to send an email to uh, all our bible college students we can send an email just to our Bible college students. Or we want to send an email to um, people in you know, a certain country. We can send an email only to those people. So that's the advantage of um, having that mailing list. And so you know, there, like that, there are a number of other uh, software packages that we use, which we will get into. I will just kind of walk us through next semester in our course on uh, uh, media and technology. And uh, the main thing I want to impress uh, uh, for us is that as a church, as a Christian ministry, uh, we need to use technology and use it to your advantage. It's going to help our work be very efficient uh, and do the things that we need to do. Right. So that's one thing. The second thing, uh, any questions on that so far? Uh, before I shift a little bit, uh, just a mention of leveraging technology. Any questions? Okay. All right. Um, the next thing I just want to mention is um, um, about innovation. So let me just go back to the PDF. Um, again, the details on this we will get into next semester. Uh, pursuing excellence and strategic innovation, which means that uh, in everything we do, we want to be excellent. Um, so that's part of our church cult culture, which we spoke about earlier. The culture we create is that, hey, whatever we do, let's do it well. Let's do it with excellence. Let's do it to the best we can. Right. So uh, we may not be perfect, but let's give it our best. Right. Uh, we may, uh, from our side, we are doing our best to do it well. That's pursuing excellence and making sure everything is done the best we can and well. Uh, so that should become part of our culture. And along with that is strategic innovation. That means don't be afraid to try out new things, do new things in the ministry. 
right? So um, the church, the world around us is constantly changing. Uh, there's there are so many opportunities being created with tools, technologies. Uh, sometimes even the the new problems or the problems that are being that are faced actually are opportunities for us to go in there and do something. So as a church, as a ministry, we need to innovate. Now, innovate means you're getting into doing something you've never done before, and you're 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 solving a problem you've never solved before, and you are, uh, you know, you're you're creating something coming up with something that probably in, in that context doesn't exist. So innovate um, as a church, as a ministry, making use of all of these technologies. You know, um, just yesterday I was having a conversation and uh, uh, we were a conversation, we were talking about, you know, how do we use gaming for Christian ministry? So, um, uh, for you know, many of us are aware that uh, gaming is such a big part of entertainment these days. Everybody, from kids to adults, are so addicted to playing games, you know, mostly on their mobile device and sometimes on their larger machines. Uh, it's such a big addiction. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying every, everybody's addicted to it, but it's it's another form of entertainment or recreation. Now. Um, uh, how, how, how can we use it for Christian ministry? What can we do? And gaming is also used in education. Uh, and the same technology, same ideas are used to educate, train people um, in medicine and other areas. You know, it's used as a, as a new way of learning, which is great. So how do, can, we, can the church use it? Can our Bible college use it? Can we introduce that? gaming experience as part of our learning process all right so we're just talking about it shared some ideas now we of course we have to explore doing something like that uh why should we do that because there's an opportunity and because there's so many people involved in it if the church positions themselves there we can make a difference right we can reach those people who are already involved in that space so I'm just giving one example where we need to think strategically and think different in order to be able to uh, innovate, to do new things, to bring the gospel and the word of God out to people. Right? So think strategically, innovate, uh, and do that. And we will cover some of these things in our course next semester on media and technology in ministry. Okay. So this is just to introduce these ideas, to place them in front of you. Uh, we'll get into the details, the nitty gritties uh, next semester. The last thing I want to mention here uh, is that in any church or Christian organizations, one thing we must also seriously think about and start thinking about it early enough is about continuity and how are you going to pass the baton uh, because whatever leadership we have today it's not going to be there forever right people are going to people grow old and they need to step out of the way and they need to let the next generation or the generations after them take over that's just the it's just part of life you can't deny it you know, um, no matter how good a leader is, no matter how anointed a person is, no matter how skilled a person is, we all have a lifespan and we are going to ha need to hand over. Sometimes that transition uh, may happen early in the sense that a leader may uh, move on to doing something else or sometimes it that that passing the baton happens because of age. Okay. Uh, uh, one generation has to pass it on. So two things in, in view of that, two things we have to think about is how do we develop the next generation of leaders? And I know I've shared about this earlier that um, the present or current leadership and the people who are currently responsible for the church or the organization should intentionally think about 
two or three generations after them. And start nurturing, developing leaders two or three generations after them. Right? Now, uh, to develop a leader, is it's a lifelong thing. Right? It's not about just going doing a course on leadership and you become a leader. You don't. You may gain some knowledge, but that's not the same thing as having a person's life shaped to become a leader. There are so many things that need to happen. And so that development of leaders should happen over time, over many years. Right? And so we need to think about how do we start nurturing at least two, if possible, three generations after the present leadership generation. Right? So uh, uh, in order to do that, uh, we have to understand generations. Right? So right now, in the right now, today's world, there are about um, um, four or five different generations that are working together in the workplace. So when you when people who study social science, you know, they will tell us, right? We have uh, the baby boomers, the generation. Uh, uh, X, the millennials, then the generation Z. So, uh, so you've got about four or five generations who are all working together in the workplace. And each generation, each of the generations, typically about 15 years gap, uh, uh, have a different mindset. Uh, there are characteristics that are typical uh, to these different generations. For example, Gen Z, uh, these are people who are currently in their early 20s. They're all, they're entering the workplace. Now the Gen Z, this generation, that gen the Gen Z generation are digital natives. They grew up, they were born, uh, you know, so to speak, with mobile phones in their hands. They're about, you know, in their early 20s and they are getting into the workplace. The other Gen Z Gen for them it's very normal to use a mobile phone and do things, you know, with that. Uh, the millennials transitioned into this. They saw the development of technology and how it transformed the world, and they come with a different perspective. The generation prior to them, who would typically be people who are in senior management positions and so on, leadership positions. Uh, uh they again they worked you know they have their own characteristics but the point is this the present leadership should work with succeeding generations develop them think about it do it intentionally otherwise leadership development will not happen so in any church we should be thinking you know how are we gen are we identifying leaders are we nurturing them are we building them up are we getting them ready and then the next part in this is succession planning, which is plan the leadership, the current leadership should have in their minds a succession plan. And, and of course, they should know it that at this time, they're going to transition. We're going to hand over leadership. And this is how we're going to do it. And, uh, you know, we want the, the so. The leadership transition is a very, very crucial time because the congregation or the ministry, they need to be readied for it and they need to be able to adjust to new leadership. Um, the new leadership, their, their, their strengths, their styles will be very different from the previous generation. Uh, their focus may also may, may, you know, may vary. So, the congregation, the people need to be prepared. So that whole transition should happen very smoothly. So that it has to be planned, the transition, as far as possible. Now, there may be times when things happen very suddenly, uh, but if leadership has been happening, then even that suddenness is not going to disrupt things too much because that, that leadership development was already happening over time. The succession can take place even if there's some sudden Re, there's a reason for a sudden transition, right? So uh, I just want to place that before us, and um, I, I'm not getting into the details here, but it's something for us to 
think about uh, in the church, in the ministry. Okay. Any questions on these three topics? I've just um, uh, mentioned uh, these three topics. Any questions on it? Any any uh, thoughts? Any questions? Anyone? Good morning, Pastor. Actually, we are morning. trying to process it because uh, it's something new that we are learning, and I think we need to process it because uh, it's a very new perspective to us. Uh, for, to me personally, I, I can just say that how okay. we can reach out. I'm really enjoying it, like uh, to the younger ones. Uh, coming out with these new innovative ideas can be really exciting. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay. Good. So we'll get into the details next semester. Charles is, um, so I expect for the next semester we go in depth. Sure, Charles. Get into that. Anything else? Any any questions? I know I just kind of introduced these three ideas, um, but. Um, any questions, any thoughts? Okay, let's just do a quick uh, five minute review of uh, what we've covered in this course. Um, so just the topics, right? So what we did was in church and ministry administration, we said, you know, what is the importance of good administration? So good in you know, a good administration is going to is really necessary to back up the ministry for the ministry to be strong the importance the objectives uh, we talked about how do you you know how do you get something started you need a legal entity a trust and you need some governance which is uh, you know usually you'll document the uh, the the uh, trust deed or articles of incorporation it's called different in different parts of the world then we talked about organizational structure. How do you create a structure for the organization? Policies, guidelines, standards, so that everybody knows how to work, how things are done here, how, how, uh, what are the guidelines to make decisions, so on. Then we talked about systems and processes so that everything runs properly within the organization, the movement of information, workflow, uh, and so on. Then we talked about taking care of church staff, people, and how do you take care of them, how do you pay them, how do you, you know, performance reviews, salaries, all those kinds of things. Then we talked about workplace culture, which is the environment in which people are going to be working, uh, both in the workplace and also the church at large or the ministry at large, the culture that we create, what, what affects the culture, the importance of leadership on the culture, so on. Then we talked about Finance, accounting, budgeting, you can share with you know with others some practical things. How do you manage the money? How do you have budgeting happening? Making sure money is going to the right place. Um, we talked a little bit very quickly on uh, uh, the legal aspects, um, planning and coordination. Uh, that's along with uh, executing projects, ministry teams, volunteer teams. And then uh, I close just today with just mentioning about leveraging technology and pursuing excellence or and, and innovation. So the technology part and the innovation part, we will get into next semester in depth on just showing you various things that can be done and how to keep in touch with new things that come out uh, and use that for the ministry. Right? So I hope uh, what we've covered um, uh, is useful. Um, all right, I see Kennedy's question here. What factors, factors do you consider uh, in succession? That means the person, the people you choose um, as, uh, as leaders. Uh, I'll just mention this briefly here, and I will also point us to a resource um, in the APC book, a house of God. Uh, we have um, 
a chapter on developing leaders. Uh, so there we kind of um, give a detailed list of how do you see if somebody is, you know, uh, a good leader. What are the things you look for? So I'll ref I refer you to that chapter in the APC book on House of God. But uh, when we uh, when we uh, talk about you know, basically, um, one guideline is uh, what Timothy wrote, uh, Paul wrote, sorry, yeah. um, uh, to Timothy. He said, you know, the thing, oh, whatever you've learned from me, I want you to commit it to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So you see three generations, Paul telling Timothy, actually four generations, Paul to Timothy. Timothy, you commit to faithful people who will then in turn commit it to others also. Four generations, Paul, Timothy, faithful, next. Four generations. So basically, what is the criteria? Two things. He says faithful. That means their hearts got to be aligned. You know, they've, they've got to be aligned, faith, faithful. They're connected with what's happening. Then comes able who will be able to, the ability, the required skill. So two things you're looking for. You're looking for alignment to the vision, uh, commitment to the vision of what's happening, uh, commitment to uh, uh, the, the mandate that God has put upon the church or the ministry, faithfulness. Then you're looking for, of course, they need to have the ability the required skills, the leadership skills, the uh, the ministry skills. They need that as well. But first look at faithfulness because skills can be developed. You can train people, but the, the, the heart condition is something, it's not easy, right? It, it has, it's either in them or it's not in them, right? So faithful and able, right? So, and uh, uh, that's, those are two things we look for. The details I've mentioned in that book, House of God, uh, you could uh, have a look at that, please. Okay. Thank you, Asha. I um, just read your comment in the chat. Thanks for your note of uh, appreciation. All right. Anything else? Any other questions? Okay. So with this, we come to the end of this course. I'm going to, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, work on the assessment. It's going to be pretty easy. It's going to be a review through everything. Hopefully, I, I will be able to sit and do it today without being disturbed. But um, I'll, I'll work on it. And uh, yeah, and that with that, we will, you know, conclude this course. Uh, Roshan, I see a question here. Uh, um, media and technology is happening next semester, so we start. January uh, will be done in April. So next semester, part of the next semester course is media and technology, one of the courses in the third year. So um, I think these uh, on, you know, yeah, yeah, so we will send out the email and all of that in December. So you can uh, enroll for the course and, you know, do that. Okay, let's pray. We'll wrap up. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being part of the course. Thank you for engaging, um, yeah, discussing, learning together. And uh, we will, you know, um, I'll put out the assessment. You can finish it. And then we will continue interacting next semester. Could somebody close in prayer, please? Anyone? Go ahead, Asha. God, thank you, Lord. Thank you once again for this class. It was amazing learning about the everything that you've been taught, teaching us, Lord. And I pray right now, God, as we have concluded these chapters, that we may not just be the one who just understood, but instead carry it through our lifetime, Lord, that what you have in this chapter, God, is for our life, too, Lord. And I pray right now, Lord, for each one of the students, God, that you bless them with what they've been taught. And I pray that they put them in their heart and write them on the tablet of their heart, God. Thank you so much for Pastor Ashish. Lord, I pray blessing over his life as he taught and also for everything that he's doing, God. Lord, blessing belongs to those. Lord, I pray for the righteous ones, God. Thank you for everything. 
And thank you so much, Jesus, for just this amazing classes, God. Uh, we honor you and we praise you for all that you are in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being on this course. Uh, you'll get notified as soon as I put the assessment there, hopefully today. And uh, yeah, see you again next semester. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor, I have one question. Uh, do we have um, regional services other than English in the morning? In the uh, APC Center? Uh, oh, uh, not yet, not yet. Uh, we are using real-time translation headsets. Uh, so uh, actually, I'm going to have a meeting with the IT team. So what our plan is to have these headsets that have real-time translation so that people can come in and listen to it in different languages. Uh, that's kind of what we're working towards. And so I, want to know, uh, I want to know that uh, whether you have Sunday services on uh, in, in APC Central. Or, or in other languages. Other languages, sir. yes. Sir. Uh, so because somebody wants to attend the attend the service, so so they are more um, convenient with uh, Tamil English mm. or uh, some other uh, local language. That's why I just want to know. Yeah. So so what so, um, so Shrikuma, what I was saying is um, the way we are trying to do it is we're trying to have real time translation. Uh, okay. 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 So when people come in, they bring their mobile phone. Uh, and they will receive the translation real time on their phone with their headsets uh, in some of these, you know, Tamil, Hindi, Malayalam, Kannada. And so then they can all sit in the con congregation. Okay. Um, but it won't affect the main service. The main service will be happening in English, but for them, they'll be listening uh, okay. to it in their language. So we're just working on that. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. God bless everybody. See you soon. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor. Welcome, everyone. God bless.